the ethical treatment of animals is very important to us. We really want them to have the best in their lives. But ethics in the treatment of humans has a checkered past. In the darkest days of World War II, the Nazis conducted a series of medical experiments on a large number of prisoners. They chiefly targeted gypsies, Poles, Soviet prisoners of war, disabled Germans, and Jews from across Europe. Only 24 years after the end of World War II, the United States put men on the moon. This technological leap was only possible because NASA used Nazi know-how to design and build its rockets. I'm a big fan of the Apollo program, but we tend to forget that Werner von Braun worked for the Nazis. Just before he started working for NASA, von Braun headed the Nazi V2 rocket program. Over 400 of these terror weapons were launched towards London. In the final days of the Third Reich, Nazi engineers built the world's first ballistic missile. With a range of over 200 miles, it hit its target, England, at supersonic speeds. The rockets were built by prisoners of war in terrible conditions. Camp Dora was a rocket factory hollowed out of a solid mountain. Very few prisoners survived. Turning a blind eye to the atrocities, the United States encouraged the Nazi engineers to work in the US. They recognized how important the V2 rocket could become as a delivery system for America's new atomic bombs. Rivaling the atom bomb in importance, the deadly V-2 rocket bomb is assembled by U.S. engineers at White Sands Proving Ground near Las Cruces, New Mexico. In fact, it was mainly German engineers recruited in a program originally called Operation Overcast and later changed to Paperclip. These German engineers shared the technology for guidance systems and liquid fuel propulsion to build the United States' first intercontinental ballistic missile. In this era of the Cold War, American presidents wanted to prove to the Soviet Union that they were the best. The flagship mission was to put men on the moon within 10 years. All thanks to the German rocket engineers. And you have to remember that Werner von Braun was not alone. Over 120 Nazi scientists went to work in the USA in Operation Paperclip. Key recruits were in the field of medicine, biological weapons, chemical weapons, physics, chemistry, and chemical engineering. 
the Allies snapped up Nazi research into amphetamines. Even the drink Fanta was a German beverage. Some of the most terrible were Nazi experiments in concentration camps into hypothermia, hypoxia, dehydration. But this data is now part of our life. The ethical question is, do we use it or do we throw it away? but it seems that unethical science continues. In a classic experiment into male syphilis, over 40 black men who had symptoms of syphilis were not treated to see how the disease developed. And in Scotland, where blood samples were taken from babies' heels, it is now the biggest genetic database of life in Scotland. Robert Heath, in 1950, was an early person to plant electrodes in the human brain. He was trying to experiment in changing sexual behavior. And today, Elon Musk is experimenting with fine wire brain implants for a neural network. The other thing that seems to continue are experiments in so-called third world countries. There have been trials in Nigeria and in India and in Guatemala into diseases which probably wouldn't have been experimented on in the first world west. As a child, I remember checking out of the library the Book of Poisons and Antidotes. Fascinating stuff for an 11-year-old. But it soon struck me, who did the research to find how many cups of coffee can kill you and how much fly spray is bad for the human? I always wondered where that research actually came from. I guess so much of the truth is out there.